Hey, what's up everybody? So we're working on the Nova today and installing the sound system. So we just got the sub installed in the sub box. I'm gonna show you guys that right now. So what we got is a Rockford Fosgate P1 and we just finished getting it installed here. We built the box custom and if I don't have that video up already, it will be soon. I built it with my buddy Adam and it's just some MDF covered with felt from Joann's. We also just finished installing the amp to the box and we've got it all wired up for the sub right here. We're just using one bridge channel on this thing and hopefully it works out good. So today we've got to finish installing the head unit so that we can run those cables to the amp. Then we've got to cut the rear speaker holes bigger because we're installing six by nines and it had some like four by sixes or something like that before. And after that, we can actually put the sub box in there, finish wiring it up and make sure the whole thing works. Wow, it looks like a fucking tree's getting attacked in here. Oh really? Yeah, it'll get vacuumed out. Previous owner really did have plans of making this thing fast because you can see he took all the sound deadening out of the trunk. Mm -hmm. and I'm still finding bits of sound deadening every time I vacuum it up. So what we're doing here is peeling the metal back so that we can create a wider hole to drop the speaker into. So we just cut little slits along the speaker hole and then we're peeling each piece back one at a time. All right, so this is our old radio and as you can see, we crimped a bunch of male bullet connectors on the back of it. So this is the same little harness piece, but from our new radio. And we're gonna crimp a bunch of the same connectors on it so that we can pop our new radio in and then connect it to the wires that already lead to the speakers. All right, so now we just gotta run the signal wire for the sub from this guy and the sub cables to the back, and then we'll worry about power for the amp. Right? Yep. Yep. So we disconnected the back seat for the Nova to run wires to the sub, and when we moved it over a little bit, look at all this gross ass shit that's under this seat. Some back felt firebird, bro. Look at that fucking grossness. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that is like an inch deep of dirt. We have a firebird. We have a gross ass back seat to clean out. So this is what happens when you take the seat out of a car that's from 1972. All right, so look what we found in the fucking <laughs> seat. Under the seat, we find a spring-loaded dart gun. Let's make sure there's no dart. Dude, it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we found another Hot Wheel. And apparently another Hot Wheel. Oh my god. And pennies. We Matt's going rich. treasure hunting in this dude, thing right now. We might be rich right now, dude. Look at this shit. We got a 1989 pink Hot Wheels. Oh god. All right, let's see when these pennies are lost. 1980s, dude. It looks like the last time someone drove this car was in the 80s. You know what? That's probably when the sound system was installed. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Look at what we pull out of this thing, dude. A fucking catalog with somebody straight out the 80s. And a gun. And a little plastic <laughs> gun. $11 for a fucking single person to have insurance, dude. Oh, well, this is why the e-brake doesn't work. Why it's not connected? It's not connected to fucking anything. You want to explain what we're doing? I don't know what you're doing, to be honest with you. Alrighty, so as I was saying, there is no holes in the firewall. So we have to run that power cable underneath the car, along the frame rails. Which we're doing highly successfully. So then we're connected to the battery, the enter battery here. So there will be a, a photo, photoshopped right here of a battery. <laughs> and we'll connect it. So the, the battery's in the drift car right now. <laughs> this is how we crimp the large gauge wire. Then you just squeeze that part together to get the one side folded over. And there we go. That's not coming off. This is a doggo. You must have a doggo while working on vehicles. The full tilt doggo. All right, so it's the next day, and I know I cut it off a little abruptly last night, but it was Mother's Day, and we had some Mother's Day stuff to do. So let me show you where we finished with the sub and what the plan is now. All right, guys, so here's our sub all installed, and look how nicely we got that tucked into the trunk. Way over there in the corner, just perfect. Tucked back into the fender a little bit, and then it's held in by one bolt back here. Doesn't seem like it wants to roll around or anything, so I'm pretty happy with it. 
So we've got the RCA and remote wire coming from that side and then power coming through the trunk because we ran it up under the car. And we are going to try and clean these up a little bit. We might try and run these wires here from this little corner. I don't know if you can see that back there, but that's where it uh, ideally is going to come up out of. So the car doesn't have oil in it right now, so we can't start it up, but we were playing it a little bit last night and the thing sounds pretty good. The sub doesn't feel like it's really pounding on you because it's like a mile away from where you're sitting, but it is pretty good. And it definitely makes the sound system a lot better than when it started. When I first got this car, it had two working speakers and they were both made of paper, so we've come a long way. So if you guys have any questions about how we installed the subwoofer or wired it up, go ahead and leave them for me in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And until then, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time on Full Tilt Drift.